outside neon cities lies untamed wilderness, forested islands, massive mountains, and billowing volcanoes. A fantastic variety of animals inhabit these diverse landscapes. A place where against the odds, life can flourish. It's time to look past bustling streets and discover Japan's hidden secrets. Japan is perched on the Pacific Ring of Fire where fault lines clash and collide. It was born out of volcanic eruptions. Its 6,852 islands pepper almost 3,000 kilometers of the Pacific Ocean, dominated by the four largest. Most of the 127 million inhabitants live in dense urban hotspots. 10% of them are squeezed into the 26 cities, 5 towns, and 8 villages that make up the teeming metropolis of Tokyo. It has the world's second largest economy and the world's two most expensive cities. But outside the concrete jungle, Japan holds secrets that many are too busy to explore. Here, nature takes control. Over 70% is mountainous. Subtropical in the south. And sub-zero in the north. Of the four main islands, Hokkaido lies farthest north. In Kushiro Shitsugen National Park, the country's largest marsh habitat stands frozen by the cold hand of winter. The early morning quiet is about to be broken. Floating gracefully on two and a half meter wings, a raucous squadron of red-crowned cranes gathers to feed. <laughs> Japanese legend says they live for a thousand years, but unchecked hunting in the early 20th century reduced this population to just 33 birds. Conservation has pulled them back from the brink. Around a thousand now live on Hokkaido. Once all parties have arrived, the dancing begins. All cranes dance, but none of them seem as enthusiastic as these elegant birds. conveys subtle messages that is good practice for next season when maturing males will strut their stuff to attract mates. Youngsters learn early, playfully throwing sticks and dancing around to express excitement and develop motor skills. It also works up an appetite. They finally settle down to feed. On land, they search out wild seeds and corn scattered by local people determined to halt their decline. Japan's 1,000 red-crowned cranes are almost half the world's population, so they need all the help they can get.
These marsh dwellers search the cold water to grab insects, fish or frogs. When bad weather rolls in, these non-migratory birds stick it out. With winter comes food shortages, and dining here follows a definite pecking order. The cranes are being watched. White-tailed eagles can hunt if they need to, but stealing is so much easier. They confront the gangly cranes with powerful wings, razor-sharp talons, and sheer tenacity. The eagles need to eat a tenth of their body weight each day, and a takeaway meal helps them reach their quota. Japan's largest island is Honshu. Over 103 million people cram into its cities, surrounded by uninhabitable mountains. The towering Japanese Alps dominate the landscape, rising over 3,000 meters and spanning about 300 kilometers. Majestic views come at a brutal price. Cold winds from Siberia pick up moisture over the Sea of Japan, then drop it as snow. Drifting up to 20 meters deep, it can even bring the ski resort of Nagano to a standstill. And 30 kilometers away, nestled inside a national park, life is no picnic for the residents of Jukukudani. Aside from people, Japanese macaques, also known as snow monkeys, are the most northern living primates. To survive at minus 20 degrees Celsius, their fur grows thicker as the temperature drops. The real challenge is finding enough to eat. In warmer weather, they rely on fruit and plants. In the dead of winter, some gnaw bark. Not very nutritious, but better than nothing. The lighter females can forage in the branches. While the heavier males brave the snow to search for seeds. During winter, they may scrape by on just half the calories and protein they usually need, relying on body fat to see them through. Youngsters can't afford to be fussy eaters. Weaned at 24 months, now they're on their own. Food is scarce and they don't like to share. In this hard scrabble season, when every calorie must be conserved, sometimes the best thing to do is nothing. The hills around Jikukudani offer something special for the 250 or so macaques living here. Literally translated, Jikukudani means Hell's Valley. But at the foot of this mountain lies salvation. These are the only monkeys in the world to enjoy exclusive spa privileges. Most of them are dominant females and youngsters. The hot volcanic baths 
help maintain the macaque's healthy body temperature. Members pamper each other with the full treatment, bonding through grooming. With great dexterity, they pick off parasites. Up to their necks in 50 degrees Celsius luxury, the bathers may climb out just a few times a day to forage. These geothermal waters are the monkey's secret to surviving five long winter months. But even monkey kids get bored. With a surplus of energy, these youngsters leave their parents, braving the brutal cold to play. No child can resist a good romp in the snow. But Japanese macaques are the only wild monkeys known to make snowballs. Compacting and rolling snow take complex skills, so it's remarkable that the monkeys seem to do it purely for fun. Winter games help this bleak season to pass more quickly. For the players and the spectators. But the snow doesn't last forever. After February, the winter spell finally breaks. Frozen hills thaw and awaken. Gaining color, the spring's warmth ripples through the islands. Cities anticipate nature's annual traveling show. Starting in the warmer south, Sakura, or cherry blossoms, spread in a wave across Japan. They bloom and wilt in just a week. This celebrated national flower symbolizes both good fortune and the fragility of life. As the spectacle invades the urban landscape, even Japanese city dwellers connect with nature for a moment. But as darkness falls, many are unaware of how close they really are to the wildlife surrounding them. In the towns, shy and retiring raccoon dogs prowl the night to claim what humans have discarded by day. People and wildlife rarely cross paths in Japan. But on the Nagara River in central Honshu, they make an exception. Following a 1,300-year tradition, these men have tied their fortunes to one of nature's best fish hunters. They carefully prepare cormorants for an unusual ceremony. The pine fire signals the start of a ritual passed from father to son. Japan licenses only six master fishermen and their crews in this ancient art. The 
men maneuver flat-bottomed boats to drive fish into the shallows. They deploy up to 12 birds at once. Cormorants can see under the water, hunting fish such as trout attracted by the firelight. As a shoal gathers below, the line start to pull. The birds make their catch and are gently persuaded to give up their meal. A ring around the neck lets them swallow small fish, but stops larger ones. This ceremony is only performed eight times a year, and these cormorants receive incredible care, living with the fishermen as part of their family. In the wild, they have a lifespan of 15 years, but these working birds may live up to 30. Nighttime belongs to the hunters. 400 kilometers southwest in Hiroshima, another stalks its prey. Every year, clouds dump up to two meters of rain here, swelling rivers. Beneath the torrent, a giant salamander prowls its domain. Moonlight is wasted on the salamanders, Almost blind, they feel their way around. They breathe through their skin, which is rich in blood vessels. Ridges and bumps increase the surface area. These meter and a half long giants have an exceptionally low metabolism. They can go for weeks without feeding. They don't chase their prey, instead they're masters of the patient ambush. A special jaw is the secret to their success. It snaps open quickly, sucking in water and any hapless fish within range. The salamanders hide in the shadows and wait. Even at close range, they can't see well enough to strike. Receptors on the head sense pressure waves. Fish just have to come close enough. With only small teeth, salamanders need a clean grab. seven hundredths of a second. Japan exists at the whim of volcanoes and earthquakes. The clashing of four tectonic plates formed the archipelago. But even after millions of years, the eastern mountain ranges are still rising. Mount Fuji stands nearly four kilometers high and carries a snowy crust for 10 months of the year. It's one of Japan's 108 active volcanoes. In 
some places, steam from hot springs, geysers and vents shrouds entire cities. On the Japanese islands, water, fire and earth maintain a harmonious, if precarious, balance. South of the main islands, the Ryukyu chain stretches 1,100 kilometers into the Pacific Ocean. The biggest island, Okinawa, dominates the chain. Here, the subtropical climate remains above 20 degrees Celsius for much of the year. The larger Ryukyu Islands were mainly formed by volcanic activity. A combination of plate tectonics and coral reefs have created Okinawa. In the north, low hills provide damp wildlife habitats. Dense forests hide orchids, wild cherry and ferns. More rain falls here than in parts of the Amazon rainforest. Japan is home to over 6,000 species of plants and animals, and Okinawa has a greater variety than anywhere else. An extravaganza of birds, flowers and insects. Some, like the meter and a half long Habu pit viper, are deadly. They hide during the daytime and lash out if disturbed. This Garden of Eden has a bigger threat than the serpents. It's the Indian mongoose. In 1910, just four were released in the south of the island. The government had the best intentions to reduce the snake population. Mongooses have an insatiable appetite for snakes, hunting and killing them whenever they can. The plan started well. The mongooses went forth and multiplied, and multiplied some more. Within years, there were thousands. They spread across the island. By the 1990s, they had reached the lush forests of the north. But the scientists missed one important detail. The Indian mongoose hunts mainly by day. Their target snakes work the night shift. Predator and prey rarely meet. So the snake population remains unaffected. With no natural predators, the mongooses thrive on a rich diet, including birds and their eggs. With 30,000 now plundering the island, the Environment Ministry is trying to control them by culling. At the top of the mongoose hit list, the highly endangered Okinawa rail. Just 700 remain. This almost flightless bird was only discovered in 1981, living in the depths of the Yambaru forest. It lives off lizards, snails, large insects and amphibians. In the breeding season, it nests on the ground, 
making both eggs and young birds easy targets for mongooses. And the habu snakes. Despite official protection and a captive breeding program, extinction still threatens. Under attack day and night, the Okinawa rail struggles to survive. Where the forest meets the sea, rare mangrove swamps also try to keep their heads above water. Worldwide climate change and rising sea levels threaten these biodiverse wetlands. Mangrove trees thrive in salty soils that would kill most other plants. Roots rise above the waterline, so structures called lenticels can take in oxygen. Mangroves aren't the only strange residents of these tidal zones. As water retreats, little air-breathing mudskippers start their housekeeping chores. They maintain a small wall to keep water inside their burrow. Mudskippers' lives are full of hard choices. They're fish, but drown if they stay underwater, and dehydrate if they stay on land. They keep moist to absorb oxygen through their skin. Eye popping is not only cleansing, it pumps around air and water they hold in their mouth and gills. Pool privileges are hotly defended, with threatening fin displays. Their eyes give wraparound vision to help avoid unpleasant surprises. For the most part though, the neighbours are pretty harmless. Fiddler crabs have their own issues. Males have one massively oversized claw the simple act of feeding takes them twice as long as females. They reserve the giant one for fighting and signalling. Waving maintains boundaries and grabs female attention. Tapping outside their burrow sends an invitation to visit. Other neighbours lead more hectic lives. For soldier crabs, low tide brings marching orders. Their mission, storm the beach and clean it up. Fine comb-like structures sweep across their mouth, filtering plant debris and even bacteria. These wandering groups are mainly males. The females usually eat underground. When the tide turns and the mangroves flood, everything retreats beneath the sand.
back north on Hokkaido, September marks autumn's arrival. The landscape changes color as the temperature starts to drop. To the east lies the Shiritoku Peninsula. Alpine hills, thick forest, and coastal habitats make this rich ecosystem the last pristine wilderness in Japan. These 711 square kilometers are home to the country's largest predator, the brown bear. Just like the city folk, they live at close quarters. This is one of the world's densest populations, with home ranges of 15 square kilometers compared to 2,000 elsewhere. Thankfully, life is bountiful. North American bears survive on almost 40 types of food. The bears in Shiratoku feast on over 90. This abundance results in a healthier birth rate. Females produce cubs every two years or so. Males play no part other than mating. Family survival depends completely on mum. Bears eat roots, shoots, berries and bugs. And if the opportunity presents itself, they can be tempted by fresh meat. During the 19th century, Sika deer were hunted nearly to extinction on Hokkaido. Now they are making a widespread comeback. A stag guards his female harem. Curling his lips tests the air for one in season. But his focus should be elsewhere. Bears can reach nearly 50 kilometers per hour. But this one's a half-hearted hunter. They can sniff out food three kilometers away, so have no problem tracking a seeker. But the many eyes and ears of the herd make catching one impossible. Across Hokkaido, people and animals compete for space. Increasing pressure on resources squeezes wildlife into ever smaller areas. With around 2,000 bears on the island, these normally solitary animals are bound to confront each other. Hot tempers and 12 centimeter claws spell potential disaster. Protective mothers keep their distance. But cubs are a different matter. They're naturally curious and still to learn the rules about mixing with strangers. Adult bears rarely indulge in such close contact. The wary mothers soon bring their cubs into line. A clip round the ear signals her family to move on. from the Shiratoku Mountains provides the lifeblood of the bear population. The network of rivers are breeding grounds for 10 species of salmon. Some have swum thousands of kilometers at sea and now return to their natal rivers. They've come here to spawn, while the bears come here to dine. Yeah. 
Bears don't have great eyesight, so the mother heads for the shallows, where salmon are easier to spot and chase. The cubs get an early fishing lesson. From late summer to early winter, these waters churn with a salmon run. When they leave the sea, they stop eating. Their immune system shuts down, conserving every drop of energy for the challenge of spawning. They battle past shallows, rocks, waterfalls, and bears. Some males grow humped backs and elongated jaws. Others change color. Scientists believe this transformation might make it easier for species to recognize each other during the breeding frenzy. From the thousands of eggs laid, just one or two fish will return to breed, but many of those won't complete their mission. In preparation for winter, bears will eat up to 20 salmon a day. Each female fish may hold 4,000 eggs. It's all valuable training for this year's cubs. They'll rely on this river for the rest of their lives. But right now, they're still playing with their food. Until they perfect their fishing technique, Mum will stand by to pick up the slack. With winter approaching fast, she has to be sure they're ready for hibernation. When temperatures plummet on Hokkaido, Sika deer march towards sheltered areas and more abundant food. Freezing winds from Russia set ice flows in motion until they gridlock. To the northwest, the Sea of Okhotsk becomes a solid white slab. To the east, winds and sea currents keep one channel open. It brings an opportunity for intrepid hunters. Stella's Sea Eagles. Their local name, Owashi, means the Great Eagle. Around 5,000 are left in the wild, and up to 2,000 come to Japan each winter. They are accompanied by their close relative, the white-tailed eagle. For 60 years, the birds have come here, taking advantage of man. The port of Raouzou expanded at a boom time in the fishing industry. Even today, Japan hauls in 5% of the world's annual catch. Every morning, boats trawl the inner ice flows for salmon and pollock. Flocking from sheltered valleys, birds time their arrival with these daily excursions. Despite falling stocks, the Japanese fleets pull out nearly 11,000 tons a day. Some slips from the nets and bycatch gets discarded, to be snatched 
hunt by the birds. With vicious claws and powerful wings that span two and a half meters, they make fishing look effortless. Each bird may eat a kilo a day. But this bounty may not last much longer. Fishermen were once a meal ticket, but not anymore. The glory days of the trawlers have long gone. Overfishing has depleted the stocks and decimated the fleet. Fewer fish means less food for the eagles. Their already low numbers are in decline. With increasing pressure on resources, the struggle between man and nature in Japan grows more critical. The beauty, grandeur and serenity of these islands often get overlooked and overshadowed by modern Japan's frenetic public face. Here, people and wildlife seem worlds apart, but they share the same small space on an ever-shrinking planet. But as attitudes to the natural world change, protection and conservation are coming to the fore. The wild Japan, few even know exists, needs to be respected and revered. Only then will her secrets be safe for the years to come.